This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God. Read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training in Book 3. In Chapter 3, this is Section 1, Part 5. Time, Space and Personhood, Part 5 of 6. The present cause is the belief in separation. That is the one thing the mind has tried to conceal. It made up a world with linear time and all these separate parts as a hidden and hiding place or a smoke screen to conceal this present cause that must be examined. Right now, there is a present cause. That is all it really comes down to. But the ego pulls out all its magic tricks to avoid being looked at. Of course, that is a metaphor, as if the ego is this identity. Ultimately, it has to be just looked at as thoughts. You come to a point of knowing that my mind holds only what I think with God. Workbook Lesson 142 That puts the ego out of business without any life of its own. The plans you make for safety all are laid within the future. Where you cannot plan, no purpose has been given it as yet and what will happen has as yet no cause. Who can predict effects without a cause? And who could fear effects unless he thought they had been caused and judged disastrous now? Text chapter 26, section 8, para 5 The deceived mind believes that the hypothetical is real and that it is disastrous. <laughs> It has judged disaster in the past and it believes that disaster will inevitably be repeated in the future. It believes that there is cause for fear because of the disastrous effects it thinks really happened in the past. Real pain, real misery, real scarcity. It thinks it has proof that scarcity will come about in the future. More pain, scarcity, lack and loss. That is what the whole ecosystem is based on. Belief in sin arouses fear and like its cause is looking forward. Looking back but overlooking what is here and now. Yet only here and now is cause must be if its effects already have been judged as fearful. Text, Chapter 26, Section 8, Para 5 In gentle laughter does the Holy Spirit perceive the cause and looks not to effects. Text, Chapter 27, Section 8, Para 9 The Holy Spirit does not look to or judge the projections of the world. He is not working in the world. He is not finding people jobs, parking spaces and sunny days for picnics. He is not helping people to lose weight or, friend, find a soulmate, David, and so on and so forth. The Holy Spirit looks not to the effects, but has judged the cause. The ego is the belief that produced all the effects. All the images on the screen come from the ego and the Holy Spirit knows that the ego is not true. He is simply judging. He looks at the ego and sees that it is untrue. He does not judge the images that have been projected from the ego. He looks not to the effects. Friend, 
If I was very sad a few days ago, I had to believe there was a cause for that pain. I experienced pain and now I look back on it and say, that was disastrous. To turn that around is to see that it was total misperception. There was not anything that happened that caused me to feel what I felt. It was all a projection from my own mind. I was looking at the script, making a judgment about it, and misperceiving what was happening. David, even the eye that seemed to feel the pain was a misperception. From this moment, it is just seeing how that must be so. Friend, yes, I was misidentified. David, take it even a step further back from I was misidentified. Who is that I? Who is the I that is misidentified? The deception is thinking that there was this real thing, this real person back then that experienced this pain or that was misidentified. Can you see how that reels it back to the present? Do I believe that there is a present cause, small c, that is disastrous? Friend, And as long as I do, then I have to believe that disaster is imminent in the future. David, if it was real in the past. Friend, hang on to your seats because it is coming again. David, even if it is constructed that salvation and atonement are coming, if it was real in the past, then I'm going to have to wait. I have to go through a period of more pain. The wrong mind wants to see the pain as real. It has been real and it will be real. That is what has to be questioned. Yet only here and now its cause must be, for its effects already have been judged as fearful. And in overlooking this, Is it protected and kept separate from healing? For a miracle is now. It stands already here, in present grace, within the only interval of time that sin and fear have overlooked. But which is all there is to time? The working out of all correction takes no time at all. Yet the acceptance of the working out can seem to take forever. The change of purpose the Holy Spirit brought to your relationship has in it all effects that you will see. They can be looked at now. Why wait till they unfold in time and fear they may not come, although already there? You have been told that everything brings good that comes from God. And yet it seems as if this is not so. Good in disaster's form is difficult to credit in advance. Nor is there really sense in this idea. Text chapter 26, section 8, paragraphs 5 and 6. Friend, yeah, great. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> David, that relates to what you were saying earlier. You want the experience. It can say all kinds of things in here, but until you have the experience, and Jesus is saying, right. Good in disastrous form is difficult to credit in advance. Friend, I do not understand what you are saying by that. David, If you are experiencing confusion, frustration and lack of peace in any form, then words like you have been told that everything brings good that comes from God might sound nice, but it is not your experience. It does not make any sense. If God gave answer to the separation, where would he have placed it? Would he have placed it in the future? Or would he have placed it in the present? Wouldn't it be cruel to place it in the future instead of the present? 
That would mean that there would be a gap between you and the acceptance of it. What if he has laid it right under your nose, so to speak? What if it is right here? And what is blocking your awareness of it if it is right under your nose? Friend, do not leave me hanging there. Why should the good appear in evil's form? David, God has given you the present answer. The Holy Spirit is right here, right now. Friend, how can who I am be yet to come? David, why should the good appear in evil's form? And is it not deception if it does? Its cause is here. If it appears at all. Text chapter 26, section 8, para 7. Its cause is here is referring to the good. The cause of good is here if it appears at all. Why are not its effects apparent then? Why in the future? And you seek to be content with sighing and with reasoning. You do not understand it now, but will some day. And then its meaning will be clear. This is not reason, for it is unjust and clearly hints at punishment until the time of liberation is at hand. Given a change of purpose for the good, there is no reason for an interval in which disaster strikes to be perceived as good someday but now in form of pain. This is a sacrifice of now which could not be the cost the Holy Spirit asks for what He gave without a cost at all. Text chapter 26, section 8, para 7 Look at that reasoning. Why should the good appear in evil's form? And is it not deception if it does? I mean, there is cause for joy right now. If I am not experiencing the joy and the peace and the rest, it cannot be that God is withholding anything. It is not like the sun is not shining if I am covering my eyes with my hands, wishing it were not so dark. <laughs> oh, That is what the deceived mind is doing. It says, Father, Father, help me, as it holds up its shield against the light. Take my fear away. <laughs> Friend, but even if the Son of God is doing that, wouldn't the Father still? David, shine, 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 shine. The shining does not stop. All the Father can do is shine. But will the mind be aware of it? Friend, won't the Father pull your hands away? David, no way, no way. We pause here with the end of part 5 of section 1 of chapter 3 in book 3 and we will continue with the concluding part, part 6 of Time, Space and Personhood in tomorrow's episode.